Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is the 49 Days of CBC, and I've got somebody with us this morning. I don't even need to tell you his name. He's uh, he's responsible for checking everybody in for each week of camp for seven weeks, and uh, I appreciate Randall Burton so much with the effort that he gives uh, to camp, not only during the seven weeks of camp, but during the year. He uh, works hard for Carolina Bible Camp. He loves the place. He loves the kids. He loves the staff. And it's just an honor to be able to spend a few minutes with you, Randall, today to talk about Carolina Bible Camp. The first kind of question that I'm going to throw at you is going to be one that's probably going to hit you right in the heart. Uh, yeah. What's it feel like not having camp right now? You know, it's really being here every day at camp and uh, not hearing the chatter and the noise and the bell and the horn and seeing everybody uh, it's 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 pretty stark it's lonely um, but I'm thankful that we've got people in place and around the state in churches and parents who share our love for CBC and who are making sure that the kids who would normally be here are safe and are receiving uh, the attention that they need so that they'll be able to, to gain the spiritual blessings that they miss from being here. So even though I'm, I'm fairly sad, I'm, I'm also encouraged just by how much I'm seeing people who love CBC expressing that love online and, you know, the t-shirts and the memories, you know, memories sustain us in difficult times. And I don't know many people associated with CBC that don't have some of those good memories. And um, so, you know, a lot of uh, tears there at the first that sending out that video and thinking about that, there was, a, you know, a lot of tears, but um, I've grown to, to accept it and to actually be encouraged just by the expressions I'm seeing of so many people loving CBC and all the good memories and good things that we hear from time to time. So um, I think uh, I think my despair is offset too by the joy of knowing that we'll be together again and that um, our absence from each other for a while is going to make that time just so much more special. So uh, I'm looking forward to when we can be together, <laughs> focusing on that. Yeah. Well, we have a lot to be rejoiceful for, like you say, uh, with all the all the stuff that you're seeing online right now, and yeah. uh, just the love, the love and care for CBC. Now, I know that you've got, I, I really don't know how many years of experience you do. <laughs> well, do we have to go there? <laughs> yeah, we got to. You earned every okay. one of right here. Okay. So, come on. So, how long, or how old were you when you first went to CBC? I was eight years old in 1958 when I first attended CBC down at Camp Thunder, Thunderbird. Uh, that was our, our second year of camp. It was my first year. Uh, it was the um, first year right after the Marvin Chavis had, had passed away. And uh, I'll never forget, you know, that first year of camp. Uh, it was a beautiful place. And um, camp got off to a good start there, actually. It was... Uh, there was a chapel out on the point and uh, sunsets were just magnificent. And we were in that little chapel singing and uh, it just resounded with uh, those songs. It was such a special place. I actually uh, looked it up on the internet a couple of, a year or two ago and, and it's still there. <laughs> we had a church retreat there last summer. And oh, really? Yeah, that was neat. That was neat. And Gloria Cole, you know Gloria. Oh, yeah. Uh, she had sent me a photo of her standing outside of one of the cabins there, uh, one of the first years at camp was there. So I thought that was That was cool. in the days when the screened in porches and the bunks that when the springs broke, they it looked like a camel inverted on them. You'd have to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd have to take a piece of plywood uh, to be able to sleep at night. Yeah, but it was a fun place. Um, you know, who could have imagined in, in 1957, 58, 125, 150 kids getting together for something like that. And the six men that started camp, they never dreamed what CBC would become today, but they had a vision and saw a need and God bless those six men for what they did to get it started. And, you know, 
from humble beginnings, you could say, to where we are today. It's just an amazing feat. It, it shows the love and respect people all over the Carolinas have for Carolina Bible Camp. So. It's an awesome story. When, when I think of Burton, I think of you and your brother. <laughs> You know, that, that's synonymous with uh, camp. And uh, I thank y'all for the love that y'all had for camp. Well, Wilson Wilson went to camp the first year, and uh, he never quit and uh, wouldn't have missed any time had it not been for his illness. Uh, but his love for CBC was evident, and, and he, he loved the kids. He put them first, and uh, he looked for the best in people. And... Um, he had a lot of good ideas that uh, were never brought to fru fruition, but over the last several years, some of the things that he proposed have have kind of caught on. So it's interesting to see that. But um, Wilson uh, encouraged uh, a lot of young people. And, uh, you know, I just wonder where the church in the Carolinas would be had it not been for the influence of Carolina Bible Camp people like Wilson and and HR and, you know, all of the other forerunners, I guess you could say of our generation, Andy, but um, I, I don't know of another uh, way that the church could have been impacted as much as it has. You know, I think over the years, we've probably baptized between 12 and 1500 people. And, you know, that's just a phenomenal amount. No congregation in the, in the country, as far as I know, would have that many conversions in a period of time that we have. Um, but um, Wilson, you know, his influence extended far beyond camp. He he planned things to keep kids together. I remember one time we had a skate ice skating party down in Concord with the, he invited all the people he knew around the area. There were like 300 people came one, one, one evening. He had a uh, banquet that he, that he, scheduled once a year kind of as an alternative to the prom and he would have the kids here for a Friday night and they'd stay all night and do activities and things all night and you know it was kind of their senior banquet I guess you could say. I mean, he had youth rally at Kannapolis it was so big that um, he got so big that they actually had to move the Sunday service from the old Kannapolis building over on Plymouth Street to the gym theater oh, wow. um, at one time so uh, it, he kept people involved and, and he didn't, when, when kids went home from camp, they didn't forget. And, you know, you and I have, have struggled with that, uh, getting our staffs to build relationships and keep up with kids. And in this day and age, we have to be careful about some of those contacts after camp, but still, um, it served a good purpose and, and CBC does the same thing. It, it's a continuing effort for us. Um, but Wilson and I, uh, I can't, I, uh, went to camp for four or five years in high school and then I moved to Tennessee in college and was absent for a couple of years. And then I started bringing my youth group from West 7th street in Columbia down here. We chartered a bus and came over and, um, I met someone and thought she was the light of my life and that didn't work out, but, uh, <laughs> that was, I uh, got to remember that, I guess, Teresa will yeah. mind. Um, but we, um, that was about 70, 72 or three. And then I moved back to the Carolinas and started back to camp in 1983. And I've been coming ever since. So most of that time I worked Wilson's Week um, as just kind of program education director. And um, I started helping in the kitchen in 84 and I've been doing that ever since you know uh, managing the food and ordering it and uh, the only time I missed coming to camp was one year I couldn't get off work and I was living in Montgomery Alabama Teresa and I had gone there to get our master's degree and I had one of the old satchel phones and a beeper <laughs> and the beeper would go off and it would be somebody in the kitchen wanted to place an order and I would stop what I was doing and call them on that little satchel phone. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> to get in the order for the food. So it's it's been a lot of fun over those years. Met a lot of good people. And uh, uh, it's just been a good, good ride for us. And uh, I feel like um, 
I feel like I've probably grown more than the kids have, and I wouldn't take anything from my association, uh, you know, professional life, being involved with juvenile delinquents uh, over a period of time was uh, equipped, me, equipped me to be more patient sometimes than a lot of other people might have been. But uh, it's, been, it's been good for me, and I cherished every moment of it, and I've got a lot of good memories. I know you do as well. Yes, sir. Well, just sitting here listening to you uh, talk about it, and you can hear the, the shaking in your voice, and that's the love of uh, Carolina Bible <laughs> Camp, and I, yeah, I appreciate is. that. But if you had, uh, out of the 60 years of involvement with Carolina Bible Camp, um, is there a special memory that you'd like to share with us? You know, I was thinking about that today. It's really hard to pick one. Um, There's, there's just been a lot of, a lot of good memories. Um, I think back over the years of the young people that have um, asked me to, to be a part of their um, baptism into Christ. I think about people who called after camp and said, hey, we, you baptized me at camp. Can you do my wedding? Or um, I think about... Uh, up at uh, Camp Shaw, up near Waynesville, and, um, and trying to forget the bad things of the place. The best part about that camp was the hillside, and you could stand down on the ball field, and we'd have our devotionals there at night, and we'd send somebody up on the side of the hill, and they'd spell out of a word a word out in luminaries like faith or hope or whatever, and we'd have a devotional standing down there, and uh, we've done devotionals with uh, candles that had formed the form of a cross at uh, Woodman of the World in Asheboro one year, and kids come up and talk about, you know, how they still remember those devotionals. Uh, I think about the floating luminaries that we had one year here at, here at uh, CBC. Uh, you light them and let them go, and they they float up, and that was quite a sight. Wilson one time had a hot air balloon and uh, Jeff Cannon had a helicopter here one time and we've done a lot of things over the years yeah. to, to uh, create interest. We've had fireworks displays and I remember one of the first years we were here somebody was uh, uh, climbing up the rock fireplace at the new CBC dining hall and he got up and came back down and I said, you know, that's just a facade. That's not really rock on that. And, you know, it could fall off at any time. And he never did that again. I, mean, I, think, <laughs> I know a number of kids that would have tried that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he did. And, and I got to see him not long ago. He came back to help install the new lights in the dining hall. But oh, cool. uh, it was fun talking to him. Um, <clears throat> you know, so there's not been just any one moment that I, that I have as a fond memory. I think it's just that, you know how that is. It's the collective spirit of that time. I mean, you and I both could tell stories. Uh, I've told it to you several times about a little boy that didn't pass the swimming test and uh, he <clears throat> hadn't been coming to camp long um, and, and he decided he wanted to try it again. I think it was on Wednesday and I happened to be down at the pool and so the lifeguards, you know, kind of got everybody to the side and let him start his swim test. And as soon as he started, you know, 60 other guys that were lining the side of the pool began cheering with all they were worth. And a couple of kids were swimming beside him. You know, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And just to see that kid get out of that pool and smile from ear to ear and having passed that test. I mean, that's what CBC is about. It's helping each other to be who we can be. Um, so there, there are hundreds of memories like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I, I, I think about that. I think about, um, um, people coming back that used to come to camp and you see them married and have kids and you're just under your breath. You're saying payback, payback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, yes. There's just so many memories like that. Um, you look through all these pictures. I've got two albums that Wilson and Leo gave us and oh, yeah. pictures back my first year of camp and, you know, the little notes that people write to you, uh, you know, you cherish all of those. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all good memories. 
yeah, that's the neat thing when you have those kids come back and they uh, they just want to come hug you. Uh, sometimes you don't, you don't remember their names. <laughs> no, uh, and you don't you don't know that you're having that kind of an impact on people. Yeah, you're so right. You're so right. And it's not you; it's God working through us. And and I hope we all remember that. But you know, still, it's an humbling experience to realize that God uses us for His purposes sometimes. Yeah. We're his hands and feet when we're there. Yeah. And, and CBC is. I'm confident of that. Yeah. yeah. It, it gives every. It, well, I'll say it for myself, and you'll probably say the same thing, that CBC has made your spiritual growth even that much better. It, oh, yeah. It's stronger, uh, more faithful. Um, yeah. Because you see it working so good, so well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, yeah. The one question that uh, I always like asking, and uh, this one, you, you've already had the questions given to you, so you know what's coming up next. <laughs> and uh, we've all experienced this, that little fella or girl that's uh, showing up to camp, and uh, they're scared. They don't, they don't really want to be there, but we're trying to talk them into it. So what is it you say to them to give them the confidence to stay during the week? You know, there's not a lot I, I say to them. Um, I just try to get them to, to give it a chance. And I say, I get somebody else involved other than me. Mm -hmm. I get another camper or two to, you know, this kid's struggling a little bit. Can you help him out and buy him a Coke? I mean, I'd rather it come from those kids because they can relate to each other better. And yeah. that kid that's struggling doesn't think I'm trying to, uh, trick him into staying. Yeah. Or, or he might think I'm trying to trick him in, but he wouldn't think the other kids were trying yeah. to do that. So yeah, that makes sense. I try to just love him and um, and uh, point him in the direction of somebody else that can help him. And usually that works. And then I try just to get him to take it small increments at a time. You know, if you can just, you know, just give it a chance till tomorrow morning or tomorrow night, you know, and try to give it to him in little increments. Um, and then the kids, I want to expand on this a little bit. There have been kids that come and they don't want to be there and they're rowdy and they they have problems and so on. And it's those kids that I'm probably the most attracted to, which I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> but uh, it's those kids that have a problem that I'm the most attracted to. And um, I saw Wilson one time at Woodman of the World in Asheboro. There was a picnic table out behind a dining hall and the kitchen workers go out there and eat their meal and have devo devotionals and stuff. It was kind of just a place we had, had people sit together and sing and do different things. But I saw Wilson sitting out there one afternoon. He had a little boy in his arms and he had, I mean, he had him wrapped up, you know, little boy couldn't do nothing but squirm. And Wilson just sat there with him for a while, just sat there. And after a while, the little boy just kind of calmed down and he said, now do you believe we love you? Oh, yeah. That ripped your heart out. <laughs> it did. And that little kid loved Wilson to death. That rest of that week, he saw Wilson, he saw that little boy wasn't far behind him because he knew he loved him. And if we show, if we show kids that, we're, we're not going to have trouble keeping them there. And usually if you make work with a kid enough and they stay and, and have a good time, they'll, they'll remember that the rest of their time. <laughs> there's been so many kids that you know you and i both experienced that uh they come in rough they yep. they're they're invited by a friend they know they don't know the church they don't know the love of you know christ and and we get to have them for a week don't we and uh we got to break down that outer shell to get to them but once they see that we care for them that's when they open up and and, and, you know, Andy, we, a lot of these kids, we don't know what they go through at home. You know, we, we think they have good Christian homes, some of them, but some of them may not be living like you and I expect them to. And so it takes them a while to know that we really care. And if we show them we really care, that it'll, it goes a long way toward breaking down that, that barrier. We have to remember that sometimes. Yeah. Who you can your uh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. You're starting to disappear on me now. <laughs> I was leaning on the desk. That's all right. <laughs> um, well, uh, 
I've enjoyed these uh, few minutes talking with you. And this last question, yeah, you're not going to be able to answer it with one person I know, because uh, there's been so many men that have uh, left an impression on you over the years. Um, a lot of these people I, I didn't get the opportunity to meet. Um, and uh, but if there's one staff member or camper that's left an impression on you, or a couple, uh, can you share those with us? There's two men I'm going to mention, and I, I, uh, most people won't know who they are, but Bill Smith came to camp. He was real active in camp years ago, and he was an athletic director. He always had a whistle around his neck. And when I was coming to camp, I was, um, I was, I wasn't an um, outgoing person. I didn't make friends that easy. I was kind of all to myself a lot. And he, he showed me some extra attention and love and care. And I've always appreciated that. And then Howard Winters was the most, um, he influenced me without ever even knowing it, but he was a, a Bible scholar, a student of God's word. And you'd see him sitting down by the canteen a lot with a Bible in his hand studying. And you'd walk by and he might ask you a question. <laughs> and it just made an impression on me as far as how much we need to know God's word and make it a part of our lives. And he, he lived it. It wasn't, you know, something that he just put on on Sunday. He lived it. And um, without knowing it, those two guys influenced me a great deal in, in the times that I've been at camp. Um, and then, of course, Wilson. And I can't say enough about how important he was to me and how much I miss him. Um, when my mother passed away, Wilson had to grow up real quick and be the dad a lot of times. And Wilson miss, missed a lot in his lifetime because he took care of others and didn't take care of himself sometimes when he really needed it. And when he was hurting, uh, he would never ask for help. And, um, but yeah, he, those three guys, they're top, they're top. So. Randall, it, it's been a true honor sitting here talking with you this morning and or this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's evident in your your hard work, for Carolina Bible Camp, that you love the place and you you really put everything into it, and we appreciate that. And you probably don't get the thanks enough, but I want to thank you. Um, this last question I'm going to ask you, and. Uh, if you had the opportunity to speak to your staff and to the kids of week four this year, what is it you want to say to them? We'll be together again <laughs> real soon. Amen to that. Well, guys, this has been the uh, 49 days of CBC. Um, it's just uh, it's a pleasure getting to spend time with everybody on these short little interviews and just sharing your history and your love. At, I, I could sit down and listen to Camp Thunderbird stories, I'm sure, all day long. Because um, I remember going there in the early 70s uh, to a different camp. It was a day camp there. But uh, that would be, be neat to sit there and listen to those stories. So is there anything else you want to say to us before we cancel or uh, close out this interview? <laughs> no, I'm just uh, – this will probably show on Sunday or Monday. Is It'll show right? on Sunday of your Monday. week. Yeah. Just uh, – Anybody that's fourth week be looking for uh, email and information on our virtual camp that starts Sunday night at seven. And I'm going to try to send it out to any of our camp participants that want to be involved in it. If, I'm going to get permission from the directors if they don't mind, but we've got yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody in the morning uh, speaking on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday it's boys and Tuesday and Thursday it's girls devotional. And then, a little craft in the afternoon and then a meeting at night, uh, different speaker. And then we're following that with a concert by different college acapella groups. We've gotten some tapes and things from them and they're letting us use that. Okay. We're going to play that online just kind of at the end. And then on Friday night, uh, Roger Scott from Alabama has recorded a lot of the songs that we've sung over the years and he's, we're going to play that as well. So I think that's just kind of a neat way to be attached and, uh, it's fourth week in some ways, but it's also everybody, and yes. we want to invite everybody as well. So, as CBC, keep CBC in mind, you guys. Keep us in your prayers. 
those of us who are on the board and who work for CBC, just uh, continue to remember us. We got a daunting task at times. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll keep up the Andy, hard work. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll talk to you later.